page 11 of integration. Uh, first, we're going to make a table here um, with the uh, integrals of each of these functions. Uh, the only thing different between uh, these functions and what we saw before is uh, we're going to kind of uh, reverse the chain rule for these. We're going to say, hey, what if you got a um, linear function inside your functions here, like, for example, 3x plus 2 or 5x minus 1, something like that. What happens uh, then to the integral? And uh, basically, you know, remember that when you take, uh, let, let's take uh, this example here of, um, like, uh, let's say e to the 3x plus 2. If you take the derivative of that, you're going to get e to the 3x plus 2, stay the same, right, times the chain rule, be times 3. The 2 disappears because it's just a constant, right? So uh, basically what you got is uh, if you start out with uh, e to the 3x plus 2 and divide it by the derivative of that, which would just be a, then you would get uh, the function itself, okay? So uh, let's try let's try that. We're going to put uh, e to the ax plus b, and we're just going to divide by a. And then we're going to test it by taking the derivative. So the derivative of that would be e to the ax plus b times the chain rule a. And we have a here. And so, yes, we got the original function back again. So that worked. Okay. If you remember in the previous page, we found that the integral of e to the kx would be uh, e to the kx divided by k. And you can see that this is almost the same because the b doesn't really affect anything. It, the, the, and when you do the chain rule on b, it just disappears. Okay. Um, let's go to the next one. So for the next one, it's kind of the same thing. You're going to have uh, the function uh, to the n plus 1 divided by the n plus 1 power, as we've seen, it's like the reverse power rule. And uh, and then we also need to divide by a in preparation for when the chain rule uh, puts an additional a factor out there to cancel that. So let's, uh, let's, um, let's take the derivative of that and test it. So it would be n plus 1 times ax plus b to the n divided by n plus 1 times a, and then we take the chain rule a, okay, so those would cancel, those would cancel, and we would get the original function back, so that's perfect. Okay. All right. Next one is uh, 1 over uh, a variable, and so basically the uh, integral of that would be log, right? log of ax plus b. And uh, due to the chain rule, in preparation for the chain rule, we want to divide that by a. And then why don't we test that out? So the law, the derivative of log of ax plus b would be ax plus b. Uh, we already have a 1 over a out front because of the preparation for the chain rule. And then we're going to multiply by a uh, due to the chain rule. And those cancel out, and we end up with what we wanted. So you could say that basically with all these, all we're doing is preparing for the chain rule by dividing by a factor of a. Uh, let's see, cosine of ax plus b. So the integral of that would be sine because the derivative of sine is, is cosine, right? And then we would divide by a factor of a. Uh, now sine, the integral of sine would be negative cosine because the derivative of of cosine is negative sine. And again, in preparation for the chain rule, we divide by a there. Okay? So basically, you can see the common uh, thread here is that we always divide by a in addition to um, the rule that we already established. So I'm not too complicated. Um, all right. Let's move on to uh, some integrals with numbers, which should be easier than, than what we just derived. So uh, we have a cubed function, 
If we take the integral of that, we're going to have 2x plus 5 to the 4th divided by 4. And um, we do need uh, a 2 here. The a factor needs to be divided out. So if we're going to simplify that, we'll put 2x plus 5 to the 4th over 8. Um, if you recall, basically we have the, the, the uh, 2x plus 5 to an additional, uh, uh, we add 1 to the third power, we get 4th, we put 4 in the bottom, and we um, put the a factor, which is 2, also in the bottom. Let's do this one. This uh, is a, let's rewrite it. We're going to put it as 4 to the 2x minus 1 to the negative 4th. And uh, so we would use the inverse power rule on this. So instead of 2x minus 1 to the negative 4th, it would be 1 uh, added to that. So it would be the negative 3rd. We would divide also by the negative third. And then we would also divide by the factor of a, which is 2 in this case, right? So if we were going to simplify, it would be um, 1 divided by negative 6 divided by 2x minus 1 to the third power. Okay? All right. Let's uh, rewrite this one, too, to make it a little bit easier to see as a um, power rule. So uh, we would have 3x minus 4, and we would raise that power by 1. So instead of 1 half, it would be 3 halves. We would invert the 3 halves and put it on the bottom 2 thirds. And the a factor we would also put on the bottom, which is 3. So that would be... 2, 3x minus 4 to the 3 halves divided by 9. G. Um, let's see, we have a, um, if we uh, use the inverse power rule, we're going to have to the fifth power divided by 5. Uh, the 3 just continues out front, it's just a coefficient. Um, the a factor in this case is negative 1 because it's a negative x, so a is negative 1, so we need to divide by negative 1. And then we'll have negative 3 fifths, 1 minus x to the fifth. 2a, integrate with respect to x. Okay, so in this case, uh, the integral of sine is, is negative cosine. And then uh, we need to prepare for the chain rule by dividing by the a factor of 3. Okay, so if you take the derivative of that just to test it, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to put an equal sign there, it's uh, I'm taking the integral, so. Okay, integral. Um, I would get negative sine of 3x times 3, and then the negative uh, and the 3 would uh, cancel out the negative and the 3 in the numerator perfectly so that it would end up exactly with sine 3x. Uh, what about this one? So the integral of cosine x over 2 would be sine x over 2. We have a coefficient of 3 here. Uh, now remember, in preparation of the sine rule, we need to uh, divide by the a factor, which is 1 half, so it would be the same thing as multiplying by 2. And so that would be 6 sine of x divided by 2. Uh, 2e. Um, here we have a sine of 2x plus pi over 6. Uh, the integral of that would be a negative cosine, again, uh, of you know, that exact um, function inside. And then uh, the coefficient of 2 would be out front. Um, now we need to get ready for the chain rule by dividing by the factor of a, which would be 2. So the 2's kind of cancel out. We end up with negative cosine 
of 2x plus pi over 6. What about this next one? Cosine 2x plus sine 2x. So the integral of cosine 2x is sine 2x divided by a, which is 2. The integral of sine 2x would be negative cosine 2x divided by a of 2. Uh, next one. The integral of cosine 8x is sine 8x divided by 8. We keep the coefficient of 1 half in front. The derivative of negative 3 sine x would be negative 3, actually positive 3 cosine x divided. And there is no chain rule because it's just x, right? Let's test this one out just to make sure it works. Uh, by the way, this 1 half times 8 in the denominator would be over 16. So let's, uh, let's test it out. We're going to take the derivative now, and we'll get the cosine of 8x times 8 over 16 plus our negative 3 sine x. And uh, yes, this matches. And yes, this matches. So everything's fine. All right, page 12. Um, find y, of y equals f of x, given that the derivative uh, is equal to square root of 2x minus 7, and that, and that y equals 11 when um, x equals 8. So basically what they're, they're giving us data points here, so that when we take, oh, and uh, let's go back here for a second, because in my haste, I forgot that I need to put uh, integration c's uh, all over here, right? But I need to put the constants. Every time I take an indefinite integral, I need to add a constant c, right? So, sorry about that. Okay. And finally here. Alright, sorry about that. Okay. This reminded me of that when it gave me a specific x, y coordinate here. The reason why they're giving us that is so that we can figure out what c should be. So first we're going to find out the indefinite integral of, uh, of this. And I'm going to just rewrite it so that it's uh, easier to take the inverse power rule. Uh, so we're going to take the integral of that. So we would uh, make the power 1 higher. So it would be 3 halves instead of 1 half. We would... Uh, divide by 3 halves, which is the same thing as multiplying by 2 thirds, and then we would uh, get ready for the chain rule. In preparation, we would multiply by the a factor of 2. So um, this would be the integral, and then we would add the integration constant c. And you can see the 2's neatly divide out, so we end up with that. And then, uh, and then we're going to plug in x equals 8, y equals uh, 11, and then we'll get um, Let's see, 2x minus 7 to the 3 halves. x turns out to be 8, right? So 2 times 8 minus 7, 3 halves, divided by 3 plus c. And let's multiply that out. 2 times 8 is 16 minus 7 is 9. 9 square root is 3. 3 cubed is 27. So it would be 27 divided by 3 plus c would be 9 plus c, so c is 2, right? So uh, we could um, rewrite this now. We'll say y equals um, 2x minus 7 to the 3 halves uh, divided by 3 plus 2. Okay? Number 4. Uh, using the identities cosine squared equals 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2x and sine squared equals 1 half minus 1 half cosine 2x, if you remember these from a few chapters ago, to help you integrate cosine squared x. Okay. The reason why uh, it's a little bit easier to integrate it with using these identities is uh, <laughs> that's, uh, that's like a uh, composite function, right? It's so squared on the outside, it's cosine on the inside. Um, not really apparent how you would uh, take the integral of that with, you know, two composite functions. But if we substitute uh, this identity, 
then we could see that now it becomes a simpler um, integral similar to what we've done in the past. So uh, the, the integral of 1 half would just be 1 half x. The integral of 1 half cosine squared x would be, um, or not cosine squared x, it's cosine 2x, would just be sine 2x. And then there's the coefficient of 1 half out front. We would divide by the a factor in preparation for the, the chain rule. And uh, last of all, we would add uh, the constant c. Okay, uh, 1 plus cosine squared, um, we could, uh, again, just substitute in for cosine squared. We're going to uh, uh, substitute that. So we're going to have 1 plus 1 half plus 1 half cosine 2 of 2 times this angle. So it would be 2 times 2x, which would be 4x. Okay, and then we could simplify this. We could add together the 1, uh, I'm sorry, we could add together the um, 1 and a half. So it would be 3 halves plus 1 half cosine of 4x. And now we're going to take the integral. And so it would be 3 halves x. Uh, and the integral of 1 half cosine of 4x would be 1 half, uh, 1 half sine of 4x. And we would divide by the factor A in preparation for the chain rule. And then we would just add C. Right? So it would be 3 half X plus sine 4X divided by 8 plus C. That's out of there. Okay. Number uh, E. 1 half cosine squared. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so that I have enough space. Okay. All right. Uh, one half cosine squared four x. So now I'm going to substitute in um, one half plus one half, and then uh, cosine two x. So it'd be cosine of this angle here four x. So that would be eight x. Um, and so if I multiply that out, it will be 1 fourth plus 1 fourth cosine of 8x. And if I take the integral of that, it will be 1 fourth x plus 1 fourth sine of 8x divided by the factor of a in preparation for the chain rule plus c. Okay. Um, 5a. Um, here we have a, um, we could, uh, we can use the, um, the power, inverse power rule here. So we could put 2x minus 1 cubed divided by 3. There's the coefficient of 3. We need to maintain that. And we need to divide by the factor of a in preparation for the chain rule. And, uh, so we could simplify that a little bit. We could change it to 2x minus 1 cubed divided by 2 plus c. What about this one here? Um, we could uh, we could use the inverse power rule again. So we could put the fourth 4 divided by negative 3 because that's the factor of a. Um, and we can simplify this now. If we simplified it, it would be 1 minus 3x to the fourth divided by 12, we've got a negative there, add C. Okay. All right, now this one we're going to rewrite so that it's easier to do the inverse chain rule. So it would be 4 times 5 minus X to the 1 half. Uh, if we do the inverse chain rule on this, it would be uh, five, 4 times 5 minus X to the 3 halves, multiply by 2 thirds or divide by 3 halves, so that would be 2 thirds, and then uh, we would also divide by the factor of a, which is negative 1 in preparation for the chain rule. Let's uh, try to simplify that, so it would be negative 8 thirds divided by 5 minus x, 3 halves. Okay, 6a. Um, so these aren't too bad. Uh, the integral of 2e to the x would just be 2e to the x, right? The integral of 5e to the 2x would be 
e to the 2x divided by 2 times phi. We, we just divide by 2 because that's the a factor um, according to the integral table that we derived on the previous page. Uh, and then, of course, we need to add the c factor. Oops, integration constant. We need to add that, too. Did I miss any others? Mm, I think we're okay. All right, c. Uh, so here, um, the integral would be e to the 7 minus 3x divided by the a factor negative 3 plus the integration constant. Uh, what about this one? This one would be, uh, the integral would be log. It would be 5 times log of 1 minus 3x. 1, oops, 1 minus 3x. And uh, divided by the factor of a, which would be negative 3, plus c. And then here uh, we got... Um, I'm not, I, I don't think we can do this uh, using uh, the um, using the the formulas that we just arrived. It's a power rule outside of an e function. I think the best thing to do is to to multiply this out. Uh, so we could uh, say e is foil, and so the e to the two x uh, for the first terms, the last terms would give us e to the minus 2x, and then the the outer and the inner terms would give us um, e to the x times e to the minus x would just be e to the 0, which is 1, so it would be plus 1 and plus 1 um, in the inside. So that would just be the integral of e to the 2x plus 2 plus e to the minus 2x dx, okay? So now it's... Uh, a pretty simple integral, right? So we could put e to the 2x, e negative e to the negative 2x would be the integral of e to the negative 2x. We would just put a negative out front uh, to, oops, not that easy, right? I need to divide by the factor of a, right? And then the 2, the integral of 2 would just be 2x. And then, of course, I need my integration constant. So I think I'm okay now, right? Let's just test that. We'll take the integral of this, or the derivative of this. So derivative of e to the 2x is 2e to the 2x, and so that would cancel out with the 2 in the bottom. It would give us e to the 2x if we took the derivative. The derivative of 2x is 2. The derivative of negative e to the negative 2x would be uh, negative 2, negative negative 2 to the e to the negative 2x, and that would cancel out with the 2 in the bottom, and that would give us e to the negative 2x, which is what we had also. And then, of course, the derivative of c is 0. So, yeah, we do the derivative, and it checks out. It equals the original uh, function before we integrate it. So, we're done with 12.